So Made in Abyss. We actually watched it. It's an anime. It, I think it's based uh, on a, a new one. Yeah. Did we judge it? I don't remember if we judged it or not. I don't know if we judged it or not because I tend to only watch like three or four of the anime we judge at any time we judge. Right. So here's the deal. It's an anime. And in this anime, there is, it's a fantasy world. And in the fantasy world, which I think is Earth. Now, no spoilers. We'll save spoilers for the end. So don't worry. There's some island. And on the island, there's a big ass fucking hole. It's just, it's just like a, a, a completely isolated island. It's just like, you know, and the whole island is a big hole. And there's like a ridge around the hole with this town. There's like- a ridge around the hole where everyone lives, like it's some RPG or some shit. And the hole is the abyss, and it goes down. No one knows. It goes all the way down, like way down. I don't think it even has a bottom. And there's like, you know, they have maps of it. And at the bottom of the map, it's just like, wah, 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 wah. Now, the gist of the show is, what's the deal with the abyss? It's this terrible secret of space. Ooh, wait, where did the abyss come from? Why is it the way it is? Why is there a fantasy world down there, and but not outside of it? But unlike, say, a darker than black, where there's a secret in space, and then they do all this other nonsense, and the secret in space just in the background, this show is a beeline. It's basically... Here's the characters, there's the abyss, they're going fucking as far down as possible, as fast as possible, and that is the plot. Yep, there's a character, and her mom was like an abyss master. They have like this, it's a very RPG, right? They have like It col- feels very Secret of Mana style. Also like, yeah, it's like they have these colors of whistles for like how strong you are at going in the abyss. Yep, JRPG, oh, they're, she's a white whistle. Right, yeah, so they're the, the white whistle ones. is the strongest, right? So her mom was a white whistle who went to the bottom of the abyss, and she gets a note from mom saying, come find me at the bottom so she's like well even though i'm just a little kid with a little red whistle who doesn't know what they're doing i'm going to that bottom and we're going to just the as the viewer you're going to learn all about the abyss because all you want to do is know what's the deal what's the deal because there's so many things to know what's the deal with you know where did this person come from where did these monsters where did the abyss come from and what, so far how unlike, come that how come this unlike say attack on titan that just doesn't even get close to the secret in space and when it does it's stupid so far, at least having watched one whole season of this, and there'll be more. Season one a does manga. not. Yeah, there's manga. Does not actually end the story, but it nope. ends at a pretty good place. Like, mm-hmm. I feel pretty good about where it ended. Like, I don't feel, I don't feel like I did at the end of uh, the first Attack on Titan season. No, uh, it feels like it's going somewhere. And it feels like there's a real secret that'll probably be interesting. Right, it's like they don't answer necessarily the questions that you're asking, but they keep revealing more things and which then give you more questions, right? Yep. So, like, I think there's, you know, <laughs> I don't know how much is spoilers or whatever. We'll, but it's we'll like, get to a spoiler right, line and we'll... Yeah. Uh, the main thing is there's this, like, a curse of the abyss where going down is easy. Anyone can go down uh, as long as you don't get killed by some horrible monster or something like that. Because yep. it's a really hazardous place that gets more hazardous the deeper you go. But there's nothing inherent about the abyss. Like, if you just had a rope and came from the sky, you would go all the way to the bottom, just no problem. But if you try to go up in the abyss... Horrible things happen to you immediately. Like, if you go in a little bit and then, like, let's say you take a few steps down and come back up. You'll get, like, a headache. You'll be, like, dizzy just because, right? And if you go down, maybe, like, they have levels of the abyss. If you go down, like, one level and come back up, you'll be, like, vomiting and nauseous, like, crazy. Yep, go a little further, like, blood just starts spurting out of your eyes. Right, but only if you go up. As long as you're going down or or, or staying at the same elevation, it, you're not affected. But if you try to go up out of, if you're already in the abyss and you try to go upwards towards the out of the abyss, that's when, you know, this sort of curse just nails you. There's even situations where, like, they're in the abyss standing on, like, a tree or something, and they want to get into this treehouse that's above them. And they're looking at it like, ah, oh, shit. There's, and there's, yeah. there's a, the, tree, the people in the treehouse lower, like, an elevator basket thing, and they get in the elevator, and it's like, the elevator's only going up a little bit, but it's like, oh, my God, if I get in this elevator that goes up to the treehouse, I'm going to be all sick, aren't I? It's like, yep. yes. They, they, get out of the, they get out of the elevator, like, vomiting all over the place. So let's talk a little bit about the world, because uh, the, the main characters, the, like, the people we follow in the show are little kids. They're, like, 12. Yeah, literally. if that. They're little kids. Right, and they're and, drawn in a very cute way. Well, one of them is not maybe a kid. Well, we'll see. One we'll of get them a, is a robot who we don't know how old it is. Yep. But it is, it is a robot 12-year-old child. It could be, like, a 100-year-old robot that looks like a 12-year-old child, but it has the mentality of a 12-year-old child and the, and the visual appearance of And we got all one. these little kids... And they're all red whistles, and the storytelling we get, there's some environmental storytelling, and some characters explain things, and there's little details that kind of fill in the picture, but basically, there's an orphanage in this town, and all the kids in the orphanage basically are made to go down into the abyss 
get artifacts and bring them back up. Yep. Very RPG style. And as they get better it at it... Seem, it doesn't seem to be an abusive orphanage. It seems to be like an okay orphanage. Like, it's pretty legit. Like, the kids like die. It's like, it's still pretty, like it's strict, you know, where like the, but it's not, uh, you know, it's not like an evil orphanage like a Oliver, you know, one of those kinds well, of Well, uh, later in the show, you see what the evil orphanage looks like. <laughs> yes, you do see the evil orphanage later. <laughs> but, like, the kids go down and get these artifacts. And here's why the shit, like, one of the reasons I like the show. And it's like, it's like, there's a mystery of like, whoa, why the fuck is this abyss full of artifacts? Yeah, it's it's all precursor technology, and as you know, that is one of my main things. In they also media. find like they they constantly find skeletons in the abyss when they're yeah, digging. There's two thi- There's the three things in the abyss. The skeletons are always praying. There's three things in the abyss. There's priceless artifacts from an ancient and unknown civilization that some of which are like powerful magic items. And also, for some reason, the deeper you go, the artifacts become more complex and more powerful and yep. more amazing. So it's like you go down one level, you find like a plus one sword. You go down three, and you find a weird magic box that like blows up if you look at it, and like weird stuff. It's like, how did this come to be? Uh, there's monsters down there. Yep. And there's praying And the skeletons. monsters are more dangerous as you go deeper, because it's a JRPG. Yep. And they, there's the all- The stronger monsters guard, the better treasure. But buried everywhere in a circle around the abyss are skeletons in a praying position. No one knows where they came from. Well, they don't tell you, the viewer. Well, so you get the impression right away, because- There are people who know stuff that you don't see as the viewer, and the characters- you see in the show don't tell you the viewer. Yep. But you can see people in the show who clearly know more than they let on, like the White Whistle people. But people still tell other characters like a lot of info. Like they're not they don't hold back. Yeah. But it's like this one point where they go to this place that's like a museum of relics or whatever. And they're there to see some specific things. But it's like, what other stuff is in there that we're not seeing? Yep. It's like a huge building. It's like what do the scientists who work there know? What do the archaeologists know? They must know something. So the abyss is basically this pit, and it's either maybe a spaceship crash, maybe it's some precursor technology. Like, we don't know. The we show have no idea what, what it is. It could be anything. It could be a portal yep. to another world. It it's be- implied that there were other abysses all over the Earth and that this is the last one. Oh, I didn't catch that at they, all. They talk about how they, they, they mentioned this a couple times early on, that this is like the only unexplored one. Hmm? That there were other holes that were like had similar things going on. I didn't on. see that at all. And there's also this sort of side sub story about like all these nations in the world warring yeah, over access they, they to do, this abyss. They do allude to that, and I don't know what they don't explain it enough, but there are definitely stories they tell about like the cave raiders or the people who go down to get relics. And how they like, fight in, with other cave raiders bump, from other countries. Right. It's like for some reason, I guess this island where the abyss is must be some sort of neutral territory, but the abyss itself is not. Or the nation that controls it now like won that war. Like, yeah, we don't or know. there was a war in the past where they destroy where they, they won and now that that country or controls the abyss or maybe the whole world they control who yep. knows but yeah there's, there's like these unnamed countries you don't know what the deal is so the main character is this girl who lives in the orphanage and she's a red whistle and normally kids just as they get better at learning these cave reading skills they progress to like blue whistle and black right. whistle and like you see they show you people who have you know higher whistles and they're clearly stronger you know they've they've gone into the abyss enough that they've with their with their greater strength, they can go deeper and come up without vomiting, and they can. Yep. They're also super strong. But it's kind of like diving, like they like they have artifacts that help them. They also just have gained skills. It's like you dive too deep scuba diving, and right. then you have to like do special things yes. on your way back. They're up. higher level RPG characters, and they yep. can, they can go into the abyss deeper and beat stronger monsters and do more awesome stuff. So like the kids go way deep, like in the early part of the show, like deeper than they should, and. There's people who are down there who are totally okay, who are just higher level than them, and they interact with those people, and interesting stuff happens. But the general plot is that there's one girl who's our main character, and her mom was a white whistle. The white whistles are the only people who have no depth limit. They're allowed to go as deep as they want, and they're basically on their own discretion, and no one can tell them for what. They're also all like legendary people. Like they, they know like all the names of all the white whistles. Like, yeah. Because there's not too many of them. And they're all They're go- all they're like all Elminster. Go- right. They're all godlike <laughs> They're all Elminster characters. from Forgotten Realms. And they have each white whistle is like a unique they have they wear physical whistles on their neck. Yep. They have like all these unique whistles, whereas like all the red whistles are the same red whistle, right? Yep. It's like the white whistles are all unique and like one guy's got these like two skull hands, like two skeleton hands holding each other as his white whistle. Yep. 
And, you know, it's like, whoa, what's up with that dude? And this girl, her mom, was a white whistle Mm -hmm. and either disappeared or died down in the abyss. Yes. And she wants to go find her mom and find out what the deal is because a letter comes up from the abyss that says, meet me. Mm Mm-hmm. And she doesn't and know what's up. And some other papers from mom as well. And, and mom's white whistle. And a Without robot her, kid. And a robot kid. Well, the robot kid doesn't come up with the mom stuff. But in the notes that mom uh, sent back, there's a picture of the robot kid. Which is, so there must be some connection between mom and the robot kid. Yep. And the robot kid doesn't remember anything. Nope. But has terrifying powers and seems the robot over- kid really actually only has two powers. He has well, bionic three- commando arms. Okay, no, right. he has bionic commando arms, uh, great strength, and immune to the curse of the abyss because he's a robo. He's immune to the curse of the abyss. Yep, and also some crazy super powered cannon in his arm. Yep, and the cannon in his arm is very like. Spear of Longinus level technology. It's ridiculously powerful, but if he uses it, he shuts down and then has to recharge and then wakes up again. Now, one thing the show does, and other shows like Mushishi, or there's a lot of shows that have done this over the years, where there's rules of how things work, like magic systems or whatever. Yeah, this show has rules, but it doesn't have too many. Pretty much the rule is like, if you go too deep in the abyss, coming back up sucks. Or like, if he uses that laser... In a certain amount of time, he'll pass out for a certain number of hours. Right. While he recharges his battery. And there's some rules, but they're like societal rules. Like, you know, we don't we don't allow red whistles to go deeper than level one because they can't handle it. But it's yep. like nothing's stopping you from doing that. Because like if they go past level two, well, good luck. Yeah, you. Can't, We're not coming we, after you now. Right. Because even if we come back after you, if we try to pick you up and bring you back to the surface, you'll, you'll just die. You'll die while we do that. So go so ahead. So the girl. Uh, spoilers from the very beginning of the show and the robot just fucking go for it and jump down into the right, abyss. That's, I mean, this isn't spoiler because like that's what the show's about. It's like they just fucking, once they know the mom is down there, they just go. They and just- as the show progresses, I'm into it. It's pretty cool. Like the, the rate of learning new things versus new mysteries arising is the exact opposite of Attack on Titan. Yeah, it's like you actually keep learning new stuff, meeting new people, people who tell you stuff. And just uh, as it edges and they, into and they all, and a they little... All- they also show you as you're going deeper, seeing more stuff, you know, as the characters go deeper and getting into trouble and out of trouble and whatnot. They don't, they don't, it's like the top part of the world that you got used to in the first two episodes. They still keep flashing up there, showing you what those other characters are. That's the are interesting doing. thing. The plot progresses on the surface, even though, based on everything you know, there is literally no way these characters could ever return. Mm-hmm. Like, this is a one-way trip, and yet you keep seeing the the plot. Well, maybe they could stay down there until they become so white whistle strong. True, because many whistles... many years in the future, if they somehow survive in the abyss for a super long time, like a decade or two, then they could come back up. Because one thing they we got, do know, they leveled up enough. Black whistles, or maybe if they found some powerful artifact that allowed them to come back up. Black whistles and blue whistles, or maybe they could defeat the curse of the abyss and beat the final boss, and then anyone, yeah. could, everyone could come back up. Of course, defeat, destroy, removing the curse might be a bad idea. I don't know. The maybe, curse I don't might... know enough because yeah. the, even watching the whole first season, I don't know enough about the abyss to know if that's even a thing that you can do. But black whistles and blue whistles, like they go pretty deep, like way deep. And come back up. And once you watch the show a little bit and you see, like, what level two is like, and they're like, yeah, these blue whistles are down at, like, level four, just fucking around. Like, okay, that's interesting. I guess that's what a, like, 17th level bard can do. But the white whistles are very much not quite human anymore. No, they're all really weird. Like, I don't want, I won't spoil anything about this character, but the first white whistle you meet, is Ozen the Immovable. And holy shit, (laughs) that character. (laughs) Very, very powerful individual. That is a fascinating character. With some, like, insane strength. Like, you meet, a, I think, a blue whistle or a black whistle, the the dwarf-looking guy. Oh, my God. He's basically, like, the uncle. I love that guy. He looks like, you know, a typical RPG, like, fat dude with with a Bluto beard. The guy who's, like, way dangerous, but everyone underestimates him. Right. Uh, he meets the kids like pretty deep early on in their adventure. He's like, whoa, what are you doing down here? And they're like, we're fucking going for it. And he's like, all right, cool. Well, he, well he's a friendly and good guy, but yeah. it's like, he's not White Whistle. He's like one under that. He's but like he's black, like, right? But he's but he's way super strong and super fast, and he can, you know, he's like, whoa. He's and he's power. like, do you need help? I'll, he's take, the I'll one help who, you. He's the one who brings back the mom stuff to begin with. Yep. And they're like, no, no, we're going for it. And he's like, okay, just heads up. Uh, Ozan the Immovable, watch out. 
<laughs> Watch out. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, occasionally, the show edges a little too much into a character explaining something, but it usually then immediately escalates. Well, I mean, explaining something is better than not explaining. Right? True. Especially when it's a show that's 100% focused on this one secret of space with no other stuff going on. Like, it, it doesn't get into, like, the explaining is so it's much. It's not like there's, like, a lot of character dramas or other things to spend their time on. It's like the whole show just spends all its time on the It doesn't on get the into itself. the light novel translated into an anime problem where it's just characters fucking explaining everything and nothing happening. No, it's, that a, doesn't it's, happen. a, it's a manga, so. So I don't know if it's a light novel or not. I'm pretty it's sure. A manga. I'm pretty sure it was originally a manga. I don't yeah. know how how far the manga goes. I want to find way out. beyond where the show was so far. Do you know that for sure? Yeah. So I should read the manga. Uh, the manga is still going. Right, but the manga is out in English at least a few volumes. So. Yeah, 2012 it started. It's still going. But it, go, but it goes beyond what the anime does. Yes. So I should read it and to to know more right now. Or wait, because I I feel like you'll spoil a lot of stuff for the anime. I don't know if I want to read but the manga But I can read the manga instead and just because fuck the anime. the one problem with this show is that based on having watched the show and based on having read a little bit of the manga, pretty sure uh, Akihito Tsukushi, the guy who wrote the manga, mm -hmm. is a pervert. Mm, that is true of many manga. The guys. anime tones it down. And uh, the, the, the show, Emily, we've been saying this a lot now in our own lives, some anime have something I like to call the anime tax, meaning if a person who is not steeped in the world of like the shit that happens in anime because of the way anime is watches certain shows, they can't deal with it and have to pay the tax. Like Kill La Kill, if you show it to your mom, she'll be you'll be trying to explain the complex metaphor of clothing and presentation, and everyone's and, naked with boobies on. And time. your mom's gonna be like, "Why isn't that girl wearing pants?" <laughs> yeah. So. Every now and then, this show will, something will happen. And they'll be naked 12-year-olds. And you'll be like, okay, that was weird, but then we just moved on. And it, it could be innocent, but you don't know. But having looked at the manga, yeah, we know. Oh. The, uh, yeah. So it seems like in this world, like adults will just, to punish children, string them up by ropes, naked and upside down, for like a day as a, like... That's the equivalent of spanking in this world. And that is brought up more than once. <laughs> There's also multiple scenes where she's like going swimming, she just gets naked, she doesn't care. Yep. And Which basically, fine. basically the main character, a 12-year-old girl, is naked frequently. More often than is prudent or comfortable and for the viewer. The robot boy, who is her uh, companion and friend, they take these on multiple occasions. They specifically call out how he has a human penis that works. Well, because she keeps checking it out. There's even a scene in which he, he is aroused while they're in, like, swimming or something. And... A 12-year-old robot boy and a 12-year-old girl. Due to the nature of the abyss, there are a lot of... Because this show gets really, really dark and violent and difficult to right. watch, so these irrespective of that. Right, so you have these character designs that, like are Monica style. that are right that are super, super cutesy. They're not like SD, but they're like one step above yep. SD. And then But like, like breaking an arm is hyper realistic. Right. They're like they have broken arm they like break an arm, they're like vomiting and, and all kinds of horrible, horrible things are happening because characters the, the vomiting is hella dangerous. And uh urinating themselves due to pain happens Kind of often. Frequently. Yes. Now, to despite having said all that, the anime does a good job of minimizing the occasional weird things, and it doesn't intrude into the show enough to, say, to where I would say you shouldn't watch it. Mm -hmm. The show is still really good. That stuff is definitely sidelined and could be interpreted as innocent and just part of this world and part of the show. Uh, but be warned that... If you are uncomfortable watching very cute characters who are presented as like twelve year old kids being hard being horribly mangled by a monster, yeah, uh, experiencing the reality of traumatic injury, <laughs> this show is not for you. No, but I've thoroughly enjoyed the show, and I'm going to watch the sequel. Yeah, I mean, it's it's I'm not gonna say it's like the best show ever, but it's a very good, very good show, and uh, I want to I'm mostly just you know it managed to. Pre provide a secret of space that was it, good it, it made me want to know it it made me want to know it's not like i don't care yeah i really want to know uh and it managed to 
not do a, a Attack on Titan where the answer is bullshit, at least yep. not yet. And it managed to also give information at like a pretty good clip without spilling all the beans. It like continued to spill meaningful beans, not bullshit beans. Like, all right, they just keep giving you, you learn more and more about the abyss and it, you know, you're moving right along. Yeah. And I guess if you liked shows like Madoka Magica or Shin Sekayori from, new, from the New World, like the, there's interest overlap there with those kinds of shows. Mm. I don't know if we should, but I think we should maybe do a separate like final thoughts episode, but maybe wait until you uh, see more seasons. Yeah, but I will say this is this, only 13. Maybe we should wait at least 26. Because I did want to avoid spoilers, but if you read The Prince and Nothing, this abyss feels a lot like Golgotharoth. <laughs> like, a lot. Yeah. And mm. like those eggs, like those weird egg looking things that nobody knows what they do. Yeah. Like it like you find like find these egg looking things in the upper levels. They're like weird technology. Like they're And they're, there's tons of them. Yeah. And, and they go deeper and they find more, but when the ones that are deeper are more complicated. But they're not worth anything because no one knows what to do with them. Yeah. Like some of the artifacts, like at least they do something useful. But And some yeah, some of them they figured out what they do. But like the girl has to learn to like not pick all this stuff up on her way. The inventory management is a big part of the show. It's very JRPG. Because well, anyway, not only going up is difficult enough, now you're going to carry a bunch of heavy shit. Yep. It's like you went down there to collect artifacts, and now you're going or up. Or like in PUBG. And carrying things. Do, do you really need another scope? You only have one rifle. Just like leave it there. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Well, what if the next guy comes and gets it? Now they got a scope. Yeah, well, then pick it up and like throw it in the water or something. I wish there was easier ways to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I leave stuff out and try to leave traps, so it doesn't work. No. But anyway... Uh, if you could make traps in PUBG, that would be great. That's Fortnite almost has stuff like that. Like, you can build structures and, like, fortifications. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, yeah, I don't really want to spoil anything about this show, but... Yeah, if you need a, if you like a fantasy anime that's, you know, got some JRPG elements... And this you, is the best new anime like, I've watched in a while. you like A Terrible Secret of Space, then this is 13 episodes for you. It, in a, the U.S., if you want to watch it legally, I could only find it on Amazon Prime. If you have Amazon Prime, yeah. you can watch it for $0 because you've already paid for it. And if you don't have Amazon Prime... Uh, find some other way to watch it. I don't know. Oh, and I guess because I kept asking this question, you see a lot of art and a lot of memes and a lot of Twitter chatter about this show, but they pretty much only show the rabbit girl. The rabbit girl doesn't actually show up until like the end of the season. Yeah. <laughs> but the rabbit girl, it, that, like, this is that show. If you've seen people like sharing images of this rabbit girl all over Anna Twitter, this is the show that is from. <laughs> This has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music, Cat Lee for web design, and Brando K for the logo.